This is the going further lesson at the back of 6.3, determining rate of change and initial value B, 6.3D. We can interpret the rate of change and initial value of a linear function in terms of the situation in models. The rate of change is indicated by the slope. The units are those of the rise over run. The initial value B is the value of the function when the independent variable is zero. The units of the initial value B are the same as those of the dependent variable Y. Now let's explain this. Basically all it's saying is the initial value B is the Y-intercept. A liquid container with a maximum capacity of eight cups contains one cup of lemon juice. A faucet is turned on, filling the container at a rate of one-eighth cup per second. The amount A of liquid in the container in cups is a function of A of T as the time T in seconds that the water is running. Since the container already has one cup of liquid, the lemon juice, the y-intercept B is 1 as the initial amount at 0 seconds. It's where x is 0. We plot 0 for x, 1 for y for the y-intercept. The slope is the rate of change as the quantity of cups per second as 1 eighth. This means the rise is equal to 1 and the run is equal to 8. We use the rise and run to plot the second point on the line. We continue to the maximum of 8 cups where A of T is equal to 8 cups. Looking at our scale here, if that's 2 and that's 0, then that's 1. So we have a rise of 1 and if that's 8, we have a run of 8. We have 1 eighth as our rate of change. So we plot the point at 8 for x, 2 for y. And when we get to 8 cups, which is the maximum for the pitcher, we're at 56 seconds for the x value. Now we need to be careful. We can easily find that a rate of 1 eighth cup per second is equivalent to 1 whole cup in 8 seconds. We have 1 eighth 8 times, that's 8 eighths, or 1 whole cup, or 1 eighth times 8 equals 1. But remember the container already had 1 cup of lemon juice? That's why we started here. So we only need 7 more cups to fill the container. It has a maximum capacity of 8. So we only need 7 more. Therefore, it will take 56 seconds to reach 8 cups. The rate of change is 1 eighth cup per second. The function A of T represents the amount of liquid in the container at time t. One eighth cup per second is the same as one cup every eight seconds, since one eighth over one, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by eight, is going to give us one cup over eight seconds. The graph ends at eight cups as a filled container. We have the function a of t is equal to 1 eighth t for time plus 1, because we already had one cup of lemon juice. Since the function a of t is the same thing as f of x is equal to y, we have y is equal to 1 eighth t plus 1. So that's in slope-intercept form, isn't it? Here's our initial value b, our y-intercept. That means if we have 1 eighth times the time, it was 56, plus 1, we have 8 is equal to 7 plus 1, or 8 is equal to 8. Now as you move forward in algebra, you're going to find many different names for the x and y values. They could be called the domain and range. They could be called the input and output. It's the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate. y is the f of x, or in this case, a of t. It's the set of first members in a relation, like in an ordered pair, and the y is the set of second members in a relation. You're also going to learn later on that these are called the abscissa and the ordinate, just to introduce those terms to you. I also wanted to let you know that we use italics for variables, so no one will confuse the variables with other parts of the equation. So here's some examples. If we wrote f of x is equal to 1 eighth, uh, if we write that quickly, is it two plus signs? and a 1? Well, we know it should be 
t for time, if we're familiar with the equation, but someone else reading it might think that it's two plus signs if they're not familiar with this equation. If we write them in italics, we know it's f of x is equal to one eighth t plus one. If we have y is equal to five x minus two, someone who's not familiar with this or can't read your writing might think you're writing five times negative two. If we write the x with a little bit of italics, we know it's five x minus two. I've had several subscribers comment on why do you have to write it swirly like an italics, and this is why. Okay, now I want to explain discrete and continuous to help you out. Discrete, an adjective, means distinct from others, separate, individual. Like a graph can be discrete when the data points are plotted, but the points aren't connected with a line. They're separate. So that would be a discrete graph. Continuous, that's also an adjective, it means uninterrupted through space or time. So a continuous graph, a graph can be continuous when the data points are plotted and the points are connected with a line that goes on forever. And it'll have an arrowhead at the end, wouldn't it? Now this kind of discrete, notice it's spelled differently. This is E-T-E, -E, this is E-E-T. That's an adverb. That means careful in speech or action. Someone tells you a secret or there's something you're not supposed to share and you're discreet and you're careful in your speech or action. We're finished with lesson 6.3, and we're moving on to 6.4. We're going to talk about interpreting graphs. So just remember, the initial value B is the y-intercept B in the equation. It's where the line crosses the y-axis. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and join me for 6.4. Bye.